Hello everybody, um, this is my first video Beacon Light. Um, I'm taking the lead from Kim and thought I'd greet you by video this week while Kim is away uh, helping her parents move. So something I thought I would talk a little bit more about for you all is the practice of Lectio Divina. Uh, that word has been coming up in announcements both about the Ash Wednesday service that will be coming up next week and uh, the Lenten devotional study, um, the Lenten uh, adult forum study, I should say, because we'll be using that practice uh, in both those contexts. So I wanted to give a little background about what that is and why that might be something that you find helpful during Lent, but also at any time of year as you're working with scripture and trying to find um, find ways to pray that might open up new things for you. So uh, I'll, I'll introduce you to this practice actually with an unrelated story. Um, as I'm preparing for Transfiguration Sunday and for my sermon there, um, I did something that I don't do every Sunday, but I do uh, when there's a passage that I've read a bazillion times and I'm trying to think, how am I going to find anything new to say about this familiar passage? So for the story of the transfiguration, I actually decided I was going to translate it from Greek. Um, broke out the old lexicon. And um, again, it's not something I do every week. I, there's no way I'd have time to do it. And to be honest, the English translations we have are pretty good. Uh, and if I want to know what the Greek word is, I can go to the internet. So my reason for translating it is more because that practice of having to figure out what the words are and to take a closer look just slows me down enough that I start to notice things in the text that I don't notice when I read through it in English. So for instance, this time, I noticed that the disciples are afraid and when they hear God's voice. And when they are afraid, Jesus reacts by touching them. And I just never noticed that he touched them before. He reaches out and I just imagine him placing a gentle hand before he says, do not be afraid. Um, so it's not, uh, it's not something no one has discovered before, but it's just a, paying attention to this little moment that sort of changes the tone of the scripture and for me opens up new meaning. So I think of this uh, similarly to um, when you're driving through an area uh, frequently, but then all of a sudden you decide to take a walk and you get to slow down and you notice tons of things that you never pick up on when you're driving through an area. Um, just the way that flowers are placed, people's yards, uh, you might notice um, just the surroundings, the buildings, the architecture um, that you don't take in when you're going through an area in the car. And this is, I think, the benefit to Lectio Divina. It helps us find a new way of hearing scripture and engaging with it that lets us notice things that we wouldn't have noticed if we were reading through it um, to analyze it academically or if we were reading through it uh, so that we could read it aloud in, in um, worship. Uh, it helps us to slow down it helps us to pause and look around at our surroundings and just notice little words or phrases or images that come up for us uh, that reveal something new about uh, God's scripture and what God might be saying to us through the words of scripture. So I, the practice itself involves reading the scripture multiple times and taking time to pause and reflect in between. And as I mentioned, I'll be leading you through those uh, both in Ash Wednesday service and in the Lenten study that will begin at 9.15 on Sundays during Lent uh, up in Geneva Hall. And if you're interested in 
taking a pause and just taking some time to explore scripture in a new way. I hope that you'll join us for those, for those things um, and just take a walk through the stories that we normally drive through. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you all Sunday or throughout the week.